As president of Windborne Productions, Karen Pascal has been creating unique and innovative film and television productions for more than 25 years. Her passion for freshness, originality, clarity, unmatched visual style imbues every project and can be evidenced in the more than 300 productions she's created for television. Ms. Pascal is the recipient of the Leading Women Award in the category of communications and media at the National Leadership Conference for Women. She's also producer of one of our documentaries. And here she is, Karen Pascal. Hello, Karen. Hello, David. I, I am so delighted to be with you because really you're the person who gave me a start in this industry. I was an artist and you took me on and trained me, really, in I, the early I, days. Well, I visited Cheryl, Cherry Hill Farm, just up north of Toronto. and. Uh, your mom and dad uh, were immigrants from Denmark to uh, Canada. You were born here, but uh, visiting Cherry Hill Farm, she stayed for about three weeks, was the most famous person perhaps I'd met to that time, Corey Ten Boom, honored in a phenomenal way by risking her life and spending time in Ravensbrück uh, death camp for harboring Jews uh, in her home in the Netherlands, and uh, I went to meet her. This will be about 1973, and she, she was a guest on our weekly Crossroads telecast, which we were doing then. 100 Huntley Street didn't start till 77, so this was uh, a few years before. And I noticed sculptures, metal sculptures. Someone had welded together these pieces of metal to make amazingly creative sculptures, and I was told this is our daughter, <laughs> Karen Pascal. I think maybe you were in Montreal at the time, I'm not sure. That's right. yeah. But uh, that's how I first heard of you. Well, the arts is what I grew up with. I grew up with an artistic mother and, and the arts were very much a part of my life, first working in metal sculpture and then in banners and wall hangings. But Corrie ten Boom was profound in her influence on our lives. She was just an amazing, amazing woman. And amazing women is really what Made in Canada is all about. The documentary I, I did brought together three fabulous Canadian women and each one unique and uh, powerful and visionary with what they're doing with their lives. Um, I know that you have provided a platform for, for women in Canada, for women of faith and women of character. I loved, we went to uh, Calgary and we met um, Cindy Clausen. She was just amazing. And she's a great fan of yours. The I Olympic think we should- The Olympic gold medalist. The Olympic gold medalist. Skating. Five Olympic medals. This woman more is than any, any other Canadian, I understand. Yeah. Gold medals. Yes, yeah. we should take a look at this. Going into the 2006 Olympics, it was very exciting because I knew, based off of pre previous results that season, that I could be a contender in most of the races I was going into. Going into the 1500 meter race, I was going to be paired with Annie Friesinger, and she was a dominant force in the 1500 meter and normally I think I'd be kind of nervous about that just because she's so strong and such a fierce competitor. It ended up being a, a perfect race, it just, I, it just felt kind of flawless. And to stand on the podium, to see the Canadian flag being raised and um, to sing your national anthem is such an honor. Not only did Cindy win a gold medal, she won another four medals at the 2006 Turin Olympics. I won bronze in the 3,000 meter, silver in the team pursuit and the 1,000 meter, bronze in the 5,000 meter, and gold in the 1,500 meter. The thing that I really like about this medal, it may sound strange, but um, I don't know if you can see, but it's starting to tarnish a bit. It's such a great reminder for me that these medals, um, I'm grateful th for them and it's an honor to be able to win them, but they're all going to rest and pass away. And so, and all that matters is my relationship with Christ and living my life for Him. I had the privilege, Karen, of narrating uh, most of the Canada Heart and Soul documentaries. And that's why I'm getting the honor to interview you right now. Uh, uh, Dr. Froze is another one. The Hamilton um, 
McMaster University. She's been a guest on 100 Hunter Street several times. Oh, maybe when I'm talking about 100 Hunter Street, I should mention the fact that for a period of time, you were the producer back in... I was. Oh, 79, 80, well. 81, something <laughs> like that, maybe? Yes, it's way back there, but it was a wonderful part of my life. It was really a challenging part of my life because I, I went from being the artist that could do whatever I wanted with my time to understanding the restrictions of time, which is the reality of television. You're going to start now, and you're going to end now, and you got to fill it well, and that's, yeah. So now, I learned now, a lot as here. Karen's boss, I should say that sometimes she still did whatever she wanted to do, but it was always, <laughs> <laughs> it was always good <laughs> and always creative. Now, let's go take a look at uh, another, another clip from uh, the documentary featured back here, Made in Canada. Each year in Uganda, 7,000 women die of pregnancy-related complications. Save the Mothers is changing that for women like Helen. A cesarean section saved her life and the life of her baby. Now they're both going home. Well, I think the center line for me is understanding who I am, uh, who I am before God, that I'm a person that he has created, that he loves, that he has a purpose for my life. And I think that has really just given me the courage, even in situations that are difficult, to say, you know what, this is what God has called me to do. And it's been fantastic to see uh, the work overseas developing. Sometimes you feel like this, there's this wind behind you pushing you and showing you the right direction because, quite frankly, it's a new area. Safe motherhood, uh, we, we don't know all the solutions yet. Talked about a wise man uses his words carefully. I think the challenge is to reaching the goal of no mother or child should die from pregnancy-related complications is really to bring the swell of people who are engaged in safe motherhood to a critical mass in the developing world so that there's a change in expectation that no mother or child should die. Uh, we've been given the wind-up uh, wind signal, but Karen, there's one other uh, very famous Canadian woman, uh, made in Canada woman. <laughs> <laughs> and each one of them spoke of really a call on their life. This was Misha Bruger Gossman, and she is a wonderful opera singer. World wonderful, class, oh, world class opera singer. World class. Uh, she sings just anything, and, and it's quite divine. And she's but on quite a journey, isn't she? She oh, went through so. several stages in her journey to a fullness mm -hmm. of her faith. I just was trying to find a way to have a relationship with God and what was so attractive about Christianity to me was that all he wants is to commune with me but I was created to have a relationship with Jesus like the only reason we're here is so that we he can be with us it's something that I'd always known but had never really put together in a truly personal and practical way and that those, those pieces came together for me. I was really privileged to spend some time with her. And with each one of these women, you know, those kinds of gifts entrusted to them, that kind of level of talent is really something to be responsible for. And they feel that sense of call on their life. Like you heard from Dr. Jean and you hear from Cindy, this sense that they're entrusted with something and they apply themselves so fully to the excellence, to delivering it, to giving it out to the rest of the world. So Misha's quite the interesting character and she's, you know, we'll just, sit back and watch but you gave her a start too she well, had an early beginning perhaps, here uh, she was still a teenager when she appeared on Huntley Street and I was just blown away by the quality of her voice then I got to meet her dad who uh, is a pastor in Nova Scotia in the home of, of uh, the famous Acadia University uh, what a man of God he is and uh, so I uh, I am blessed I am uh, well, I, I, I got to confess to a few goosebumps here on the, on the whole Canadian thing. And Karen, thank you for making such a contribution. And I really want to encourage everybody, if it's at all possible for you to get all this documentary series and, and take a whole week and once every night, stop watching the bad news and, <laughs> and take an hour and, and, and listen to some really good news in this documentary series every night for half a dozen nights and you will not be sorry and I'm sure someone's going to tell you now how to access these documentary 
uh, Productions. Thank you, Karen. God bless you. And you did one more. I did. I did In Search of Chris Canada. Chris Hadfield. And that one I know is featuring <laughs> coming up to Canada's birthday, July the 1st. We'll all be bursting with pride at our Canadian commander, Chris Hadfield. Thank you, Karen. Thank you so much. Thank you, David.